Blog Talk Radio. This is Samuel D. Moore with Vision for Humanity Radio, and today we have our co-host, Tim Williams, an ordained minister through the United Christian Fellowship Church, working in the praise and worship ministry with the Porterville Church of God, and Tim is a great musician. He is responsible for all the instruments in that song you just heard, Walking in the Sun. So, Tim, what do you know yeah. about transhumanism and the soul kisser chip well uh, actually they would kind of run in together transhumanism in itself is the uh, augmentation uh, of our physical state uh, DNA gene manipulation and uh, combining it with uh, animals actually uh, I know there's several articles you know uh, Whenever you look at the subject, it's always you see the word enhancement over and over again, and uh, uh, you know use dog genes to increase our uh, sense of smell, and uh, I forget which animal animals that can see well at night to increase your night vision. And uh, uh, it's been an old science uh, science fiction theme for years, reptiles to. Uh, to increase uh, healing, you know, because reptiles, you know, the, the old thing about how you pull off a lizard's tail and it grows back. So, uh, you know, people just taking the old science fiction movies and see if they can make it real. The Island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking also you could uh, stick a chip in there to give the person, like, the ability to detect electromagnetic fields from the Earth like the pigeon does. Or sonar, uh-huh. like the dolphin or the bat. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, so what, what do you think about the uh, sociological implications of that? I, I know there's a lot of discussion about how if we have a race of superhumans, then the normal humans will be at a distinct disadvantage to them in every single way possible, intellectually, uh, physically, and probably morally will probably have a, more of a moral compass than they will. And I, I, I'm i thinking that if you're some sort of transhuman, you may not actually have a soul. Yeah, that, uh, there's a lot of discussion about that. I mean, uh, I know from the, uh, the biblical side of it, uh, I've read several papers. I mean, God created man in his own image is, is the uh, statement from the Bible. So he gives man that he created a human soul. So uh, the the thought is if you create this genetically altered uh, creature, you know, when a dog uh, egg and sperm come together, a, a dog spirit is there. It's not human. Uh, so if you have this hybrid, what's the spirit of it? Uh, you know, we, we started off talking on some of the earlier sessions about Nephilim, and, and one of the words, the translations in the Hebrew for the word uh, Nephilim is an animal spirit. Uh, the mm-hmm. secondary uh, translation is a living abortion. So basically it, it's explained there in, in the Hebrew of what you have if you start experimenting and trying to play God and change our DNA. You have an animal spirit in a living abortion. Yeah, right. From my understanding about God's take up the Nephilim, according to the Book of Enoch, is that 
they have demon spirits, and there's absolutely no chance of salvation for those spirits. So right. they have they have really nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. That's it. And uh, not to get off topic, but we did cover uh, uh, the uh, extraterrestrials, and I know the Catholic Church was talking about salvation for them. And of course, you and I discuss it a lot, and we believe they're the same Nephilims that we're speaking of, and you have a whole group uh, thinking they can save unsavable souls, but I, I didn't mean to get off topic here, we're talking, let's go back to the chip a little bit, uh, because, it, okay, now we have a, a, instead of a biological uh, form of enhancement, now we have a physical chip. And, and as I read it, you, you, you could say it, it's, it's our attempt to uh, gain our own immortality. And again, it's, it's man getting his own immortality through his own intelligence, and we don't need any God to do that. We can build this chip, which, uh, as I understand it, uh, has the potential, or they're trying to develop the potential to record your thoughts, uh, I think I read even one statement. It could even record and play back smells. And then, uh, of course, uh, the gene manipulation. You clone a new body, you put all that in a new body, and voila, I'm eternal now. Uh, man playing God. Yeah, from my understanding, they're trying to get that chip to the point where it can record every single aspect of human thought, emotion, and sensory perception. So... Sight, smell, uh, taste, vision, auditory, um, everything. And then, of course, emotions and every every single thing you do or say is going to be recorded um, in that chip. And then when at the end of your life, they'll be able to take that chip out of your brain and put it into a child's brain, like your kid's brain, and confer onto that child every single experience you had. So essentially the child has already got a lifetime of experiences upon birth, and then he can build from there. And so they, they look at this as a real positive thing, like they're advancing humanity. Yeah. And I, I think it's it's probably maybe a, a better idea than mixing genes with humans and animals because then for sure you don't have a soul. But as far as, um, you know, planting a chip to confer onto yourself all the characteristics of your father or mother and the lifetime experiences, I mean, that seems a little far-fetched to me. Yeah, it does. But, uh, know. Well, you know, I can relate to chip, and again, don't want to wander down too many rabbit trails, but uh, let's look at the current... Uh, 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 data collection center. Where is that in Montana or wherever that is? Uh, Utah. And we've talked Utah, yeah. And, and and the vast amount of data that can collect. So now, and then uh, I think uh, we didn't discuss it here, but I think I sent you a link about that supercomputer. Uh, I think they call it Max, uh, and I, I forget how fast that thing. I I heard it said it can calculate 600 pieces of information per second for all of the 7 billion people on Earth at once. Wow. Now, that's some computing power. Okay, so now what do we have connecting with that? Oh, yeah, a chip that can record everything. That's hmm. some goal. I mean, Big Brother, you know, the, the Big Brother book of 1984 uh, doesn't even hold a candle to that kind of aspiration uh, uh, of, of control uh, of human humanity. What yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah I, I think that, that's crazy. The, the projection I heard was they're anticipating within three decades they will be able to successfully – uh, achieve this goal of recording in a, a person's entire life and transferring that information to another human being. 
So they think it's possible. They're working on it, and it's kind of crazy. Um, that doesn't concern me near as much as, like I said, the concept of mixing human genes with animal genes to create a superhuman. Like you take an ape gene for the muscle strength, and you take a um, dolphin gene for the ability to communicate with sonar and an eagle gene for good vision, a dog right. gene for good smell. And, you know, the next thing you know, you have this superhuman without a soul that um, have you heard of DARPA? Of what? Um, do you know what DARPA is? DARPA? No. Yeah. DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's uh-huh. part of the military, the U.S. military, U.S. national security. It was established in 1958 to prevent strategic surprise from ne- negatively and impact negatively and impacting U.S. national security, and to create strategic surprise for U.S. adversaries by maintaining the technological superiority of the U.S. military. And they are involved in robotics and biology. In fact, in their um, on their website, which is www.darpa.military, M-I-L, it says um, that um let's see uh darpa's scientific investigations span the gamut from laboratory efforts to create to the creation of full scale technology demonstrations in the fields of biology medicine computer science chemistry physics engineering mathematics material sciences social sciences neurological sciences and more and notice the first two things on that list were biology and medicine. Now, yeah. um, they're either talking about biological warfare or this whole transhumanism thing. And from well, what yeah, I hear, they're yeah. From what I hear, they're working on a super so, super soldier project where they they are developing super soldiers. And that is how they're going to get this thing past the ethical barrier because the biggest barrier for the creation of a superhuman race is the religious ethical barrier. Convincing, you know, uh, uh, fundamental Christians that it's okay to mix human genes and animal genes, they will just say, well, you know, Russia and China are doing it, and if we don't do it, we're going to be behind. So in the interest of national security, we are going to go through with this super soldier transhuman project, whether you like it or not. You know, kind of like that whole, you know, 9-11 scenario where we lost our civil rights in one fell swoop. It'll be similar to that, I think. Well, that's what they do. I mean, it's always always for the greater good, and it's going to bring about peace and it's going to help mankind, and it always sounds real reasonable unless you actually listen to it uh, in the context, like you said, of trading off your your personal liberties and civil liberties. Uh, I was just looking. Have you heard of the uh, Bilderberg uh, Society? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a whole plan, and I was just reading – in 2012, uh, a woman there who, who's the uh, commissioner of the Digital Agenda Commissioner, uh, Neely Kroos, uh she's introducing legislation there that she hopes will force the adoption of harmonized e-signatures, identities, and electronic identification uh, across all the EU, European Union states. Uh, forcing a chip. They have a chip ready to go or the question, the reason I bring it up, is it this chip they're talking about? I mean, there again we have uh, the excuse of, oh, this is going to give you, like I said earlier, eternal life. This is going to give you enhanced stability. This is going to give, you know, all these wonderful benefits and bring world peace. Uh, and to respond to what you said earlier, I, I think the transhumanism uh, people will uh, react to. Of, I mean, I don't want to have be part dog, 
I don't want to be part dolphin. Uh, but, oh, well, the chip. Now, that's just going to record everything and, and give me all these abilities and, and these advantages. So, uh, I mean, I would have to agree that uh, the, the uh, cyborg type approach sounds a little more uh, acceptable, I think, to a greater number of people than, than, than transhumanism, uh, turning them into part animal. Right, yeah, and then, of course, the chip would go right along with the biblical prophecy of, you know, having a mark on the forehead because yeah. they want to put it right between the optic nerves where they cross at the optic chiasm near the pituitary gland. Right. Because there's so much, all, all that data, all that neurological data flows through that area. From what I hear, they've already got transhumanism um, farms for sheep and pigs. They're raising uh, part human pigs and part human sheep to use as organ transplant donors in Mississippi or Missouri or something like that. And the question is already coming up. uh, At what point do you give that entity the human rights, the Bill of Rights to be a human? You know, does it have to be 100%? Or is it eighty percent or ninety percent? They're already discussing that. Yeah. Uh, again, back to science fiction and that supercomputer. One of the claims for that computer is that it will actually be self-aware. So, at what point now do we compete not only with these biological uh, aberrations? But now we have a supercomputer that can calculate faster than anything on the planet uh, that's self-aware. Can it claim to be alive and a person and and (laughs) take over whatever? We're back into the science fiction realm, but uh, unfortunately, we're we're, we're technologically at that place where all these possibilities that used to be just fantastic to even think about are, are on our doorstep. They're right there. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, what, one of the things I was thinking that could correlate to the computer chip concept of transhumanism is the part of the Bible in Revelation 9-6 where it says, In those days men shall seek death and not find it. So, say, That's an for example, yeah, say, for example, they successfully transfer your soul to a self-sustaining computer system, which is programmed not to die. And huh. your, your, the emotional part of your soul stuck in this machine is like, get me out of here. I got to go. This is too much. I want to die. But you're programmed not to die. Yeah, that that comes under the heading of be careful what you ask for. You might get it. Yeah. Um, We're at the point where uh, man, you know, has tried to play God, and we've got scientists trying to play God. And at some point, uh, it's almost like God stands back and says, okay, go ahead and try. Uh, And you'll reap the fruits of that. Uh, as you said, could end up at the place, like you mentioned, uh, saying, get me out of here. I, I'd like to die. Doesn't that sound a little bit like hell? I would like this yep. to be over. I would like to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's sure the concept. Does. Yeah. You know, Arizona State University is probably the premier educational institution that is working on the whole transhumanism thing. And I was reading their website today, and one of the central themes that they talk about is evolution. It's like all these institutions just assume evolution. There's like no debate. You know, they they say, well, you know, in an evolutionary standpoint, transhumanism is a great idea because we're sort of assisting nature. We're helping nature. We're we're rapidly accelerating our 
um, a natural evolutionary tendencies, which we may have somehow achieved eventually anyway. We're just kind of getting yeah. a little turbo boost, you know? Uh, and in fact, um, in, in the Arizona State University Department um, chair or something, uh, Hava Jerosh Samuelson, her statement on their website about us is transhumanism marks a new epoch in human evolution. And, you know, the, the funny thing about the whole evolution versus creation concept is biblically, Adam and Eve were created perfectly and yeah. they could see into the spirit realm. If you read the book, the first and second books of Adam and Eve, it talks about how after they took the fruit from the tree, they lost their they lost their ability to see angel into the angelic realm. So right. ever since we committed our first cardinal, our first sin, well, what do they call that sin? The um, original sin. Right. Um, God punished us and gave us uh, took away our our eternal um, physical form and. Uh, turned us into mortals, and ever since then, we have not been evolving, but we have been losing DNA. In my opinion, there's actually some evidence to that. For example, in my field, vision, color blindness. That is not a uh, beneficial thing as far as I'm concerned. Actually, I heard somebody say that it can help you see um, deer in the forest if you're hunting, because yeah, you're not distracted by the colors. You just look to the shapes. But anyway, right. in general, deleterious gene defects are not beneficial. For example, Tay-Sachs disease um, is a deleterious gene gene defect, and hemophilia, where you bleed to death, another deleterious gene defect. Um, yeah, most mutations that we incur: trisomy 21 Down syndrome, another gene defect. That didn't help us at all. No, it didn't. It anyway. didn't help us at all. And there is no proven upward uh, upward advance as far as uh, a mutation of any 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 DNA in, in any animal or man. Every proven mutation in DNA has been a downward deleterious uh, effect. It's never gone up. Uh, now, no. there's lateral uh, uh, advancement in that uh, two people that are stronger and healthier can, you know, kind of have healthier kids, you know, a little stronger. And then, But that's also, we talked about that too, uh, the, the DNA damage over the centuries, uh, you get two people together with, uh, what do they call it, the... Uh, Recumbent DNA, where where it comes Re, together. Yeah, recombinant. Yeah, recombinant. Recombinant. And, 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 yeah, then you have, you know, then you have an even greater deterioration uh, uh, mutation. But it's always downward. There's there's no no proven, and that's that's what drives me crazy. Scientists, the word science means a method of study, and it's always a method of study that can be proven, and and, and the creationists. They can't prove anything. They've never proved a thing. And they laugh at, at people of faith that you just take this on faith, and it takes ten times more faith to believe in evolution than it does in creation. You want to hear uh, something really interesting that it says on the Arizona State University Transhumanism Department um, discussion on, let's see, this discussion is, is on S. Eschatology. Um, yeah. Eschatology is the study of end time prophecy, or uh, basically what God thinks we should be doing before He comes right. to judge us, kind of thing. And um, in this discussion, it states on the Arizona State University Transhumanism Department website, it says, "Will transhumanism inaugurate a trans ethical fulfillment?" of ethics or a decline into demonism. So it says right there, and it's funny because it's way toward the end of the discussion, kind of sort of nestled among some other things, but 
it's kind of like, um, have you ever heard of the the concept of hiding things in plain sight? Like you right. go to the Denver air, you go to the Denver airport, and there's a big, huge statue of Horus, the god of death and destruction, or something like that. And then they right. got the black, the black horse, the black horseman from the apocalypse in there, and it's like in plain sight. And then they have this beast uh, thing. And then they have a mural of Armageddon, and they have the soldier stabbing the dove of peace, and it's like just right in your face. You know, it seems to me that the people who have these agendas have some need to put it right in your face. It's like they're not actually making you research and dig and they're just putting it right out there. I mean, this was kind of hidden toward the end a little bit, but will transhumanism inaugurate a transethical fulfillment of ethics or a decline into demonism? So they're just well, telling you right there, oh, well, this is, by the way, this is what we're really doing by by doing this transhumanism thing. We're doing just what they did in the days of Noah, where they mixed human genes with non-human genes and created soulless demonic creatures that were right. uh, had demon souls. They're saying yeah. it right there on the website. Yeah, and, and and that's not a decline into it. That's uh if you go back in the beginning, like you said, it's mentioned the Nephilim in Genesis and then of course the Book of Enoch and the Book of Ju- Jubilees goes into detail about uh trans uh, humanism. They were mixing uh uh, horse bodies with the head of a man, which is basically where we get the centaur, uh, men with bull heads, uh, and, you know, it's saying they were these fallen angels who had this knowledge were doing all that. And basically they were doing it back then to, uh, to uh, corrupt the uh, DNA of man so that Jesus could never be born because they knew the prophecy there. But they didn't succeed. Uh, let me mention this. We've got just a couple of minutes, but uh, we have an advance. Uh, there's some studies. Again, I always mention Dr. Carl Baugh. They have proven, he studied a lot about the atmosphere of the earth before the fall. And the way the earth was created in his model and the, and, and the way the body, and he's had several scientists to study the brain. Our brain, by his research, was designed to live and function for at least a billion years, physically. Wow. We know now, I mean, now at 60, if you can remember where your feet are, you know, because we have Alzheimer's and all that, and and, (laughs) you know what I mean? People are surprised if you live past 70 or 80, and uh, uh, we were designed. Like you said, perfectly. We were created perfect. We were designed to live eternally. Yeah. And they just they refuse to see that. And we know now, they admit now that we only use about 10%, maybe 15% of our brain, and they can't figure out what happened to the rest of it. Well, the environment, uh, sin has corrupted it, the DNA corruption. It, we're, we're degraded people. That's why yeah. we need a savior. Yeah, you know, um, one of the funniest arguments against um, the concept that we're losing genetic information is when you argue with the evolutionist. I actually read a a evolutionary debate um, where people were saying that, no, we're actually losing genetic information based on biblical scripture. That's what it says. And they say, well, no, that's not possible, you see, because based on the concept of... um, uh, selective, um, what do they call it? Uh, natural selective selection. Yeah. Yeah. Natural based selection. On, right. Yeah, they say based on natural selection, your theory of things losing genetic information and becoming inferior is impossible because they would select themselves out of the population. Now that's uh, that's a circular argument because yeah. uh, you have to believe in natural selection. Anyway, we, we'll be back in about three minutes after the break. If you want to stay tuned, we're going to play a song now. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in three minutes. Step is 
to breed with a dog and put a chip in my head. Wonderful. <laughs> I, I think you were talking about you spoke with somebody. His reasoning for believing in evolution was that he was so smart and educated that so he knew. He couldn't tell you why, but he knew, right? <laughs> Right. You know, if if they do achieve their goal of immortality, physical immortality, then they will not be able to breed anymore because they'll hit 500 million people and none of them will die. So if they're going to achieve objective number one on the George Guidestones, which states that their objective is to maintain a humanity of 500 million people in perfect balance with nature – then after yeah. they hit that 500 million people, they got to stop having babies. Yeah. Uh, their second guide is to guide uh, reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. I mean, if 95% of the population apparently can't select correctly over, and, and they're saying we've been here for 150 uh million years, I think, or how I don't know how long man's supposed to be around. To me, it's a little over 6,000 years because I actually believe the Bible. But uh, in, in 150,000 or 150 million years, we haven't been able to improve fitness and diversity by uh, reproducing wisely. That doesn't sound like natural selection to me works. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, if, if we've been improving ever since we evolved from a nematode, then why can't we figure out how they built the pyramids? <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> I mean, that's like one of those, the elephants in the room questions. You know, I mean, if we're so smart, then why can't we make the triloton, triloton stones to this day and age we don't we don't have a crane that could lift those stones and we don't have the technology to cut them that perfectly so how is it that we're evolving it's not just the pyramids but uh there are structures here in the united states that fit that bill and and all over the world uh south america they're finding uh uh, i don't remember the exact location but I, i saw a show the other day where they found uh stuff here in North America and South America that fit that bill, stones that were cut so perfectly that uh, they can't figure out. You couldn't fit a hair in between the stones. And uh, like you said, we don't know how to do that today. I mean, it would cost millions and millions of dollars. And these were, uh, what, primitive, ignorant savages that we had to evolve from? I don't think so. No. No, I I don't believe in evolution. I used to. I I went to school to study biology, and they taught us evolution, and it sounded logical to me, the natural selection thing, that only the fittest survive. And I think that's true over the period of, uh, you know, a a few generations in general. You know, obviously the the strongest lion gets uh, the pride and and all that kind of stuff, but um, I don't believe that we evolved from a primordial soup, from a nematode or a blue-green algae or whatever. No, no, I I, I don't buy that at all. And again, uh, uh, when you study uh, DNA mutation, a a mutation of less than one-half of one percent is almost always fatal uh, to bridge that gap, you know, and then they get into the argument of of birds. So now this animal develops these big things out to the side that don't have feathers, but they're big and floppy, but somehow that's better, and it survives with these big encumbrances, and then uh, some feathers come, And a thousand years later, now it can fly. But they say, well, it developed wings so it could fly away and escape. But it had these big encumbrant things, and it couldn't get up in the tree. And it made it slower and clumsier for thousands of years while they developed. I mean, stuff like that just doesn't make any sense. You know, Uh, know, 
it, things like that, would, you would have to get wings overnight to get you out of this uh, uh, dangerous situation, whatever it is, or, you know, develop these special skills. I'm not much of a biologist, so I can't go through all the different changes. But, uh, you know, it just – none of it makes any sense. Like I say, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does creation. Yeah. Back to the Big Bang. I always ask people that talk about the Big Bang, what exploded? If there was nothing, what exploded? I've heard that the science of transhumanism is closely related to the concept of alchemy, which is an ancient precursor to chemistry and uh, medicine. Um, right. And it involved um, not only the mixing of um, chemicals to what they used to do was they would take a, a base metal like lead or iron and turn it into gold. Um, that was one of the things they did with alchemy, but they didn't just use principles of chemistry. They used mythology, magic, religion, and spirituality. Right. So the, the soul, um, transhumanism thing uh, you, you know how in the upper echelons, like you were talking about the Rothschilds and the Bilderbergs and all them, and the Bohemian Grove, if you look yeah. into what they do behind closed doors, you know, it's not all just politics and science. Those guys are worshiping owls and, um, you know, making pentagrams and uh, doing uh, ritualistic sacrifices. And they're, they're working right. in a, a realm that... Um, is, you know, apparently unrelated to the biosciences that they seem to be purporting that they're working within. You know, they, they're they're talking about, you know, na nanotechnology and computer chips and this and that, but there's something more to it than that. Like And, and like I said, in the self-description of the university, Arizona State University's transhumanist page, it says that they're descending into the demonic realm. Yes, so they're they are. basically ad ad admitting that there's something more to it than just biosciences, nanotechnology, and computer chips. Well, they all have one common thread, and they use the covering of we're going to make this perfect one world. We're going to make this perfect thing. Well, Again, we talked, we're almost out of time, but God made a perfect world. It fell through sin, and, and these men think they're going to make this perfect world. Uh, but the one common thread, the Illuminati, all the ones you mentioned, they're all going to bring back the just prince, which they give them the name Osiris, Apollo, Nimrod, which are all names yeah. for the devil. Uh, God is love, God is life, God is everything Strength and joy, hope and peace found in Him God, You are love, You are life, You are everything Please make Your precious home in me God is love God is life, God is everything Strength and joy, hope and peace found in Him God, You are love, You are life, You are everything Please make Your precious home in me When I am weak you are strong. You are strong. You're the tree. tree. Life comes from. You're the owner of my soul. Now my heart's an open door. Forever be the Lord of my life. God is love. God is life. God is everything. 
strength and joy, hope and peace found in Him. God, You are love, You are life, You are everything. Please make Your precious home in me. When I am weak, I am weak. You are strong. You're the tree life comes from. You're the owner of my soul. Now my heart's an open door. Forever be the Lord of my life. God is love. God is love. God is life. God is everything. Strength and joy, hope and peace found in Him. Found in Him. God, You are love. You are light. You are everything. You are everything. Please make Your precious form in me. Oh yes, Lord. Please make Your precious form in me. Cause You are everything. Your precious home is